What's happening, everybody? Jeff Lightsey Jr. here with the Black Boss Channel in Victory Formation. Be sure to hit the thumbs up button, like, share, subscribe. So Deion Sanders and the Jackson State football team, their season is officially over. Uh, their last game against Prairie View was canceled due to COVID-19 and all the stuff. So his official first season as the head coach of the Jackson State Tigers is officially over. That book is that chapter is closed, even though it was a spring season, even though it was a shortened season. It was a weird year, but they got it in. The SWAT got the games in, and Deion Sanders' first year as the head coach is over. His official record is four and three. Now, the reason why his official record is four and three is because, you know, of course, they won three games against Edward Waters, Grambling, and Mississippi Valley. Remember, they started the year off three and oh, and they're technically giving them a win over Alcorn, even though Alcorn, you know, forfeited the season. They just, you know, they said we're not playing in the spring because of COVID-19. So they gave them a win for that. So he's officially four and three, technically three and three. And like I said, he started the year off with three straight wins and then ended the year with three straight losses, including some pretty big ones. Uh, I think Southern beat them 34 to 14. Alabama A&M put up 52 points on them. Uh, Alabama State, they only beat them 35 to 28, but they hit Dion De and them in the mouth. And then honestly, they were a, a fumble away at the goal line from losing to Grambling, which was their second game of the year. So the question is, what, ha what do we learn from Dion's first year? at Jackson State University as the head coach of Jackson State at, of his transition from the all-pro Hall of Fame college football player, Hall of Fame NFLer, high school offensive coordinator to being the head coach at a historically black college in the SWAT conference and everything that he's done for them. What have we learned? So one thing, let's, let's first take this into account. Deion Sanders is good for business. It doesn't matter who you are or what you do. If you put it in front of Deion Sanders, if you put a product in front of Deion Sanders, he can sell said product. It doesn't matter if it's podcasting, uh, sneakers, uh, ha hair stuff. Like, you know, he got his hair back. He's not bald anymore. He's actually got a line. Um, he's got an endorsement with Pepsi and Subway. And he was on the NFL Network for a long time. And he's still doing stuff like Versus now with the NFL. Give Deion Sanders a product. He is going to draw attention to your product. He, Barstool, his relationship with Barstool. Deion Sanders is a cash cow. He makes a lot of people a lot of money because he is so marketable. He is so likable. He's a great soundbite. He is someone that just, when you put the camera in front of him, it's just some people that are natural. When you put the camera in front of them, they light up a room. And that is Deion. Deion, and that's what he did for Jackson State football. That's what he did for the SWAT conference. They put cameras in front of his face, and every interview that he did, he ended it with the I love JSU. He ended it with talking about Jackson State. He learned the history. It took him some time. It wasn't like an overnight process, but he learned the history. He learned how things worked in the SWAC, and he really, really, really gave these coaches in these schools a spotlight that they just didn't have, like they just hadn't had for a very long time. I'm not saying that they never had it, but they didn't have for a very long time. As great of a football program that – uh all corn has or as great of a football program that Alabama A&M has or as great of the history of a school like Grambling or Mississippi Valley State they didn't have a spotlight over the last few years I'm not gonna say ever but over the last few years that what Dion was able to bring he was able to sell the product of JSU football and not just JSU football but HBCU football and specifically the SWAC style football he was able to sell that. He was able. He was the reason why SWAT games are on ESPN, ESPN regular, ESPN2, ESPNU. He is the reason why the ESPN cameras came out to JSU and came out to Alabama A&M and came out to Alabama State and came out to, you know what I mean? Like it was Dion and came out to Southern. Like he was the reason why that happened because he can sell a product. He knows and the ESPN people knew that eyeballs were going to be on Dion Sanders. That is huge. That is huge because he has made it. I'm not going to say he's made it cool to be an HBCU coach, but he's opened the door and opened the lane because a lot of these former NFL players, former, you know, Hall of Fame type players don't have a ton of coaching experience. So you're not going to get, you know, a, a, a job at your alma mater, more than likely. You're not going to jump off the gate and get a job at Florida State. If you're Deion Sanders, you're not going to jump out the gate and get a job at Miami. If you're Ray Lewis, you're not going to jump out the gate and get a job at Ohio State. If you're uh, Eddie George. And so for a lot of them, 
maybe they saw an HBCU as a way to cut their teeth, but now they're just like, man, I could be here for a long time and be legendary. I can be here for a long time and make a more imp- – Deion Sanders means more to Jackson State than he could ever mean to Florida State. Deion Sanders mean more to the black community and to black people at Jackson State than he could do for anything at Florida State. There's no, even his impact as an All-American player and future NFL Hall of Famer, his impact in in, in being a coach at Jackson State, especially if he's there 5, 10, 20 years, will mean way more than he could ever put in, ever the work he could put in at Florida State. Because the impact of the community and the impact to a school that needs it, there's there's no there's no measurement for it. I think they did it. They did. There's always like these marketing polls, right? Like how much marketing value has Dion brought to Jackson State? And last check, it was over two hundred million dollars. Two hundred million dollars of free marketing that having Dion Sanders at Jackson State as the head coach of the football team he did for the university, he did for that school, he did for those black people. You like it, and it's probably even more impactful than that because him him just simply being there, success or not, and he had a level of success this year. He finished, you know, 500 essentially. Success or not, his impact is being felt. Now Eddie George is the head coach at, at Tennessee State, and he's brought in uh, NFL guys, former NFL coaches to help run his program. So the Tennessee State program is going to be uplifted. Ray Lewis wants to get in with an HBCU. Ed Reed wants to get in with an HBCU. So those programs, whatever program they decide to join or if they eventually coach a team, those programs are going to be uplifted because of the name recognition and the level of just the level of confidence that the players and the organization and the people in the facility are going to have in said player because you executed this at a high level. Ray Lewis, Hall of Famer. Ed Reed, Hall of Famer. Eddie George, Heisman Trophy winner with guys who coached 20, 30 years in the NFL. So that means you're going to be able to recruit better. With better recruiting means better results on the field. With better results means more funding. And having a name like Dion or Eddie or Ray or whoever is going to bring in more donors, more boosters, more advertising dollars, more, you know what I mean? But people can market stuff through you and through your school and through your program. That's the impact that Dion has had at Jackson State. And just one spring alternate year. One spring abbreviated year, he was able to do that. Now, I get it. We can get to the stuff on the field. They struggled massively on defense. The defense was not very good all year. They had quarterback issues the entire year. Jalen Jones has decided to transfer, and Quincy Casey is going to battle it out with Deion's son during the fall to see who becomes a starting quarterback moving forward. Both these guys will just be freshmen. One will be a redshirt freshman. Deion Sanders' son will be a true freshman. So they'll battle it out during the fall. They had quarterback issues. They had running backs that got hurt like crazy. So there are issues to fix on the field. But I'm thinking big picture what Dion has done, not just for JSU, but for the swag. The big picture is that he is getting guys, former NFL players, Hall of Famers, interested in being and helping their community, interested in helping and being there for programs that are full of people that look like us. And not to say that that had happened before, but it hadn't happened at this magnitude. Before Deion Sanders, who was the Hall of Fame player slash whatever with this kind of name brand recognition? Deion Sanders is the greatest cornerback to ever live, to ever play in the NFL, the National Football League. He is widely regarded as one of the best athletes to ever walk the planet. The man played professional baseball at a high level and professional Football at the highest level as the number one cornerback and played a position cornerback that is all athleticism, smarts and athleticism. You can't be a slow, fat, stir, you know what I mean? Like no, no agility having cornerback. And not only did he play it and played it at the highest level and he was great at it. No, he wasn't just great. He was the best. And he let you know about it. And he had a bravado, a moxie. That was like, you look, dude, you look good, you feel good, you feel good, you play good, you play good, they pay good with all these crazy sayings and stuff. Had the swag, had the talk, had the walk. And now he's bringing that to JSU. Now he's bringing that to the swag. And it rubs some guys the wrong way, and rightfully so. Guys at Alabama A&M, they're like, nah, man, Dion ain't that. We the, we the premier program. Guys at Alabama State put his picture on the board after they beat him. So, yeah, there's a level of competition still in this. 
I just can't wait to see what he does moving forward. But those are the impact that Deion Sanders, you know, reevaluating his first year at JSU. They have to improve the defense, right? They have to improve the defense. The defensive line used to get pushed around. People will run for three and three, 250 and 300 and 350 yards rushing, just running it down the throat. They played a keel car or a quill, um, the quarterback at Alabama AM. I can't now. I want to, I don't want to mess up his name, but they played him and he lit them up. He's a real, he's a real player, though. I think he's an NFL player. And they lit him, he lit them up. So that defense is gonna get fixed. And it's ironic because Dion is a Hall of Fame defensive player. And his offense at times was the one that was carrying the team. But they'll have five power five transfers that'll be eligible during the fall, including Dion's uh defensive back son, Shiloh Sanders, and a couple guys up front that they need because the defensive line is probably what needs the most help. Defensive line and linebacking core. The quarterback situation needs to get fixed. Quincy Casey and Shador Sanders will battle that out. And and they probably need to fix the offensive line as well because the offensive line gave up a ton of sacks. But besides that, those things need to get fixed. And I think that's something that can be fixed over the fall with the recruits, high school recruits that are coming in and with the five power five transfers that will be eligible. There were some that were eligible this spring, but all of them will be eligible by the fall. I think you'll see an improved Jackson State team. You'll also have a full offseason. Well, essentially you play games and now you'll have a fall camp. Whereas like Dion got hired, you know, took the job in December. They had games by February, March. All right. So it was a quick boom, boom, boom. So with more of an offseason, a fall camp, position battles, everybody being eligible, you'll see a better product on the field from Jackson State. And I can't wait, man. I think it's going to be amazing. I think Deion Sanders and his impact for that school, that football program and HBCUs everywhere is amazing. Eddie George, I can't wait to see what he does at TSU. The Southern job is open. I'm, I'm not sure if Ray Lewis or Ed Reed or somebody's going to take that Southern job, but I, I hope another Hall of Fame type NFL player, Heisman Trophy winning type NFL player gets another job there so they can get their uh, television uh, recognition, their national recognition. And it's going to be great, man. Like this impact of Deion Sanders at Jackson State is going to be felt for years to come. Years to come. Like I said, the marketing dollars, I think, was over $200 million. And that's probably on the light side. It's probably somewhere above that between his deals with Barstool, him getting them on TV every week and all the different things. And then that was a question they asked the commissioner of the SWAC about, do you think, you know, with the fall, because obviously when the fall comes, ESPN has, you know, Alabama and Clemson and Ohio State and all those games. It's like, do you think you'll see yourself on ESPN this fall? And that's something that they're going to have to work with because, like you said, Alabama, Clemson, you know, LSU, all those schools have priority over the SWAC schools. But I think having someone like Deion Sanders and having the ratings the way they were, it was great ratings for those games, and having people very, very, very interested in seeing Deion Sanders and other SWAC schools on ESPN, it's going to be something that they talk about, but it's going to be something that's only possible because Dion is over there at Jackson State University. Uh, once again, I'm Jeff Lighty Jr., the Black Boss Channel and Victory Formation. Follow me on Instagram at jlighty7. I post content on there all the time. I'll see you guys next time. Peace.